Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Adding the Delete Use Case to the MVC Database Example. In this video, we'll review the design diagrams for the Delete Use Case. We'll create the Delete Use Case components in our Eclipse project. Let's think about what the viewer will see. We have displayed a site map. As we saw in the example, the first page is the table with the data from the database. If they click on Add Entry, they had an Add Entry page. When they filled that out and clicked on Add Entry, they went back to the Browse table. If they clicked on Update, they go to an Update Entry page. They make adjustments as necessary, click Update Entry, and they go back to the table view again. Delete, as far as the user is concerned, simply displays the table again, but with one less record than was there before. The final use case is to delete the data. The user will click on delete for a particular row. The delete servlet will be called on the request. The delete servlet will call on the delete query to do some work. Once the work is concluded, the delete servlet will then pass execution back to our first use case to read the data and show the updated table. For this use case, we'll need to create only one, two new components. Here we see our input process output table for our delete query component. Delete query will be called when it's instantiated by the delete servlet. The constructor will be provided the input database name, database username, database password, and then the book ID for the record that's going to be deleted. Using this information, delete query will create a connection. It will create a prepared statement. It will then set up the prepared statement with the appropriate delete query using the book ID. We'll send the query to the database, and then we'll process the query results. Delete query will not be sending any output as it goes back to the delete servlet. Here we are in Eclipse ready to create our delete query components. Let's take a quick look at what we already have by looking at the Project Explorer window. In our web content, under the Live folder, we've already added our database driver. Also in web content, we have our index.jsp, a simple file that just has a link to get us started, and the read.jsp, which will show us the table from the read servlet. Under source, we have controllers, DB helpers, and model packages. In the controllers package, we already have our read servlet, in our DB Helpers class, we have our read query. And in our model, we have an entity class which models the book or the table in the database. Let's have a quick look at the read query to see where the link from the table to our delete comes from. Here we see the line that generates the HTML link to our delete URL mapping. You can see that we incorporate into this link by injecting the book ID. So the reference goes to delete the URL mapping for a delete servlet and sends across book ID for whatever book needs to be sent. So in our servlet we're going to be getting the book ID. So let's begin by creating the delete query component first. Right click on DB helpers, select new, and select class. Check that it's in the appropriate source folder. Check that it's in the appropriate package. Both of those look good. Now for the name, we're calling this one delete query. We'll leave the modifiers as is, public modifier for the class. No particular superclass, so there's just the generic Java object. No interfaces, no need of a main, no constructors from superclass. We'll keep inheriting abstract methods, and we'll go ahead and generate comments. Once the form is complete, click Finish. Let's expand the editor and have a look at what we have so far. Here we see it's in the appropriate package, and we see simply the stub for the class. Let's first create a field. In this class, we're only going to need one field. We're going to need a connection object as our field. The connection is the only thing that we're going to be needing over multiple methods of this class. Type private, connection, and we'll call it connection, lowercase. Notice an error. 
because we have not yet imported the connection object into this class. We want this to come from the java.sql package. So let's select import connection java.sql. We can see at the top that the java.sql connection has been imported. No need for a getter or a setter for our connection in this particular case. Let's create now a constructor which we can hand the database name, username, and password. Public, delete, query, string, db name, string, u name, string, password, pwd. Inside here we need to set up our connection to the database using this information. So let's first create a URL string that points to our database. String URL equals quotes JDBC, the technology that it's coming from, MySQL, the technology that it's going to, colon. Now the actual location URL, in our case it's localhost, at port 3306, and then a slash. We're then going to concatenate the DB name onto our URL string. Next, we need to create a driver instance. So we're going to say class dot for name, and for the class name, we're going to put com dot mysql dot jdbc dot big D driver, and from this, we're going to call the new instance method. So we have an error. It says unhandled exception type class not found exception. Three possible quick fixes. We're going to surround this with a try and multiple catches. Slightly different than how we did it in the read query. Here our catch will catch multiple exceptions and go to the stack trace. Instead of having three single catches, we have one multiple catch that will take us to the stack trace. Next, we need to get our connection from the driver manager. Type this dot connection to represent our field level connection object. We're going to set it equal to driver manager dot get connection. We're going to pass this the URL which we're storing in a string, the uname which is our user, and pwd, which variable represents our password. We see that there's another error. Again, this throws an unhandled exception. I'm going to add exception to the existing catch clause. And we see now that our multi-catch has a new exception added. This concludes the constructor for our delete query. As long as the URL is correct, this should connect to our database. For our delete query, we're going to need just one other method, and that is where we do the delete query. We're going to call this do delete. Type public void, no re need to return anything to the servlet, do delete. Now we need to hand it the primary key for the record we want to delete, so we'll pass that as a parameter here. The pattern we're going to follow is we're going to set up a string to hold our query, create a prepared statement using our query string, fill in the prepared statement, then execute the query. So let's work on setting up our string. String, we'll call it query, equals a delete query starts with the word delete. We tell it which table from books and we'll give it a WHERE clause. Which records do we want to delete? Those where the book ID equals something. So here we've created a query 
and our query is mostly complete, but there's something to fill in. This is called a token, and in Java, this token is represented by a, a question mark. It means we need to fill in the blank before we run the query. Let's create our prepared statement. Prepared statement ps equals connection dot prepare statement query. We see an error. First we need to import our prepared statement and we'll get it from the java.sql package. We see that there's another error. In this case there's an unhandled exception. So let's surround with a try catch. Seems to have cleared up our errors. Let's move our comments into the try portion of our try catch block because those need to be handled inside here. Let's fill in the prepared statement token. So we're going to use the prepared statement and then we're going to call a method. There are a number of methods we could choose from. Basically, it's a setter and we want to choose the method that corresponds to the data type in the database. So you can see there's arrays, there are binary streams, my favorite is blob, which stands for binary large object, byte, character, clob, date, even calendar are in there. In this case, we're going to go with an int, because the book ID is stored as an integer. Notice it takes two parameters, the parameter index and the actual value we're going to set. First, the parameter index. This is simply a number that represents which question mark in our prepared statement we need to fill in. We only have one, so let's put one. It is the first and the last question mark to fill in. Now we need to fill in the value that's going to be stored there. Note that this is brought in as our book ID parameter. So we'll type book ID. So now our prepared statement is ready to fire off to the database. Now to do that, we're going to use our prepared statement and call a method. This one's going to start with execute. Notice there are several executes. In our read query, we used execute query and it returned a result set. However, except for read, the other CRUD use cases, namely create, update, and delete, are going to use execute update, which will return an int. So we're going to pick the one with no parameters. And even though it will turn an int, I'm not going to catch it and use it for anything because I just don't need it for anything. That concludes our delete query class. I'll test it after I can create the servlet. Here's the input process output table for our delete servlet. A request will come in from the read.jsp when someone clicks on the delete link corresponding to the record that they want to delete. A book ID will be sent concatenated to the URL. Delete servlet will get the book ID. It will create a delete query object and hand it the database name, the database username, the database password, and the book ID. These will go to the delete query. The delete servlet will then call the delete query to delete the book from the database. When this is complete, we'll go on to the read servlet in order to show the updated database to the user. So here we are back in Eclipse. We have our delete query helper object and we need to create the servlet that will be called when we want to perform a delete. This will be fairly simple servlet. It goes in the controllers package, so right click on controllers, select new, let's find servlet, let's carefully fill out the pages. Project looks okay, source folder looks good, Java package looks pretty good. We need to fill in the class name. We'll call it simply delete servlet. Class name is filled out correctly in both spots. Select next. Here the name shows delete servlet. Let's add a description. Deletes a record for a particular book ID. We do not need any initialization parameters in this case. We need to maybe adjust or add a URL mapping. This time let's select delete servlet and edit. Notice the slash, let's leave that, and we're simply going to change this to delete. OK. Recall that delete matches the hyperlink that we created over in the read query and is part of the table. Select finish. Let's expand delete servlet and see what we have. Notice our web servlet annotation. 
for storing the description as deletes a record for a particular book ID, which we just entered on the form, and the only URL pattern available is the slash delete. There's a constructor, a do get, and a do post. As with our read query, let's put our main code in do post, but allow a do get to happen. So we'll simply type in here do post and provide it with our request and response. So any requests coming in for do get pretty much says go down to do post and get to work there. So all we're going to do here is we're going to get the book ID. We're going to create a delete query object. Use delete query to delete the record. And we're going to pass execution on to the read servlet. So first let's get the book ID. This needs to be an integer but it is coming in as a request parameter. So let's create a local integer to hold on to it while we, so we can work with it. Equals. We're going to need to parse the string that comes in. Requests, if you recall, are always string data type. And now to provide the string, we're going to do request dot get parameter. And I believe we called it book ID. Now let's instantiate a delete query object. Delete query, call it DQ for short, equals new delete query. Now recall that the delete query takes three parameters, the name of the database, in our case scif underscore library, the username, in my case that's root, and then the password. In my case, that's an empty string. Notice an error. We need to import delete query. Click on that to import. Now let's call the method of delete query, dq dot do delete. We're going to pass it the book ID, so we're looking good there. Finally, we need to pass execution on to our read servlet. Let's set up a string holding on to the URL equals We'll just make it slash read, as that's primary URL mapping for the read servlet. Two more lines, request dispatcher dispatcher equals request dot get request dispatcher and we'll give it the URL like we need to import request dispatcher. Finally we'll use dispatcher forward and we'll send across the request and response. And I think we're done with the delete servlet. Now we need to test our application to make sure everything is working. Before you do so, make sure that your MySQL server is actually running. Right click on the project name in the Project Explorer window. Perhaps build the project if that is showing in your menu. Right click again, select Run As, Run on Server. Hit Next, and hit Finish. This fires up the server and then fires up the browser. The index file shown here, we click Read, we should see the table. We have not done anything with any of the read queries, so this should still be working. Notice it works, also indicating that our server is running. The update and add a book have not yet been developed, so those will not work, but let's check out delete. How about we delete Foundation by Isaac Asimov. Very good book, but we're just going to delete it for this purpose. Note at the bottom the URL says this is book ID equal 11. Let's Click delete. What should happen? The book ID is sent to the delete server, which asks for help from the delete query. It also passes it the book ID. The delete query makes a connection, 
the server the servlet then calls the do delete the servlet then calls the do delete method and hands it the book ID of 11 this will then delete that record from the database finally execution will send to the read servlet the same one that generated this table to generate a new table based on the changes in the database so if everything works when we click delete it should appear as if this record has just simply disappeared looks like it has this completes adding the components for the delete query to our database example. For more information about the concepts that you learned in this video, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.